I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Today, we are digging in to the Happy Model Larva X, and we're gonna find out what makes this entry. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Today, we are looking at the Happy Model Larva X, and we're gonna find out what makes this entry into the ever-expanding toothpick category of micros. We're gonna find out what makes this entry so good and what could be better about it? Before we get into this video, I wanna tell you that in addition to this review video that you're watching right now, I've also made a full setup video for the Happy Model Larva X. Everything you need to do from the moment you take it out of the box to the moment you get it into the air. Especially if this is your first quad, that stuff can be a little bit overwhelming. And even if you've set up a couple quads before, there may be some steps or shortcuts that you're missing. There's a link to that down in the video description. And after you're done watching this review, you can go ahead and check that out. We're gonna start with some flight footage. I always like to show you some flight footage at first. There is no sound right now because this is the onboard DVR on the quad, recording a 720p right there on board. We're gonna start with a little bit of zoopy zoopy racing. This guy is quick, it's nimble, it handles well. In a minute, I'll let you hear the sound of the motors and you can judge how smooth they are and how much prop wash there is. This is an awfully fun quad to fly. And this is just on the stock tune. On, a, on, a, on a, even a tweaked tune, it would get even better. I do want you to pay attention to the camera in this footage because later I'm going to show you some more DVR footage just from a DVR in my pocket and I think it actually messes up the camera a little bit. So this is what the camera looks like. It looks okay. It's not the best ever, but it's not bad, especially for a nano. Here we're doing some smooth, swoopy flying. This isn't really a uh, cine whoop or anything, but this quad can fly fast and racy. It can fly smooth. You can hardly see any jitter or twitching or anything. This is a really, really good flying quad. Right here, the DVR stutters. I have no idea why it did that. DVR stuttered there. It flies really nice. Um, I, I, people are always saying, oh, this micro flies like a big quad. And of course, they never fly exactly like a big quad. But I will say just in the ability to, oh, pilot error. Anyway, moving on. The Larva X has 1103 7000 kV motors. And these are great for getting a lot of power and RPM out of these two and a half inch props. The kV is a little higher than some people might prefer, which means you lose a little bit of throttle resolution, um, especially down in the lower part of the throttle. It can be a little bit challenging to maintain altitude and especially coming around like a split S, it can be a little hard to find the exact right throttle position to avoid hitting the ground. But they are definitely fast at the top end and they're smooth as well when paired with these Avon two and a half inch props which I feel like these are if not the best certainly in contention for the best two and a half inch props you can get uh, these motors are powerful smooth reasonably responsive it's a very very good combination the flight controller is the crazy bee f4 pro the version I've got is the version with the onboard FreeSky receiver. It can do FreeSky D8 and D16 mode simply by changing a setting in the Betaflight configurator. Uh, I will point out that in the past, the Crazy Bee flight controllers have had an issue where they would lock up for no reason if you were doing D16 mode and telemetry. Betaflight, they say they've released a fix for that and so you should be able to run D16 mode with telemetry on this with the latest versions of Betaflight. If not, it's an easy fix. You either just turn off telemetry or you switch to D8 mode. Some micro pilots prefer to fly in D8 mode for reasons. You can do either. I will point out also that this is available with a whole host of other receivers. Uh, you can order it with them pre-installed, including a Crossfire receiver if that's what you're into, and that is really, really cool to see. The video transmitter is the Diamond VTX. It supports 25 and 200 milliwatts, and it has a built-in SD card slot to record the, just records the video in 720p resolution on board. Now this is not a high definition recording like the Cadex Turtle or the Runcam Split or anything like that. It's standard definition recording, but it will not have all the breakups and stuff that you would get when recording DVR in your goggles. So that's, that's nice. The camera is the Runcam Nano V2, and it is very nice to see a first-party camera like Runcam. Runcam certainly makes some of the best cameras you can get for FPV. 
I don't adore the way the Nano 2 handles exposure, but it got the job done, and especially in the Nano form factor where you're trying to save as much weight as possible, I feel like this was a pretty decent choice. The base plate is three millimeters thick, and the individual sort of spars are just a little, maybe two and a half, 2.2 millimeters wide. Um, at the, the bottom line is that this is gonna be a pretty durable base plate. Just based on the weight of the quad, it's hard to imagine you breaking the base plate in a crash. It is worth pointing out that all these little cutouts here, I mean, if you were to just fly at full speed into a hedge or something, you may not get it back. There's a lot more cutouts here for branches and stuff to snag in. Whereas if you compare it to just a traditional X-frame, it's a lot more likely that you're going to be able to turtle out. That's a small consideration, but maybe something worth Just don't fly it into a tree and you'll be okay. Speaking of weight, this guy weighs... 51 grams and the recommended battery on the product page is a 300 or 350 milliamp hour 3s now I have one of those and that that battery at least the one I have weighs 36 grams for a total of 88 grams that's actually that's actually shockingly close uh, Bob Rugi Kebab, who is one of the guys who is a biggest proponent of toothpicks and very much popularized them, he suggests a weight of about, an oddly specific weight of about 73 grams. Um, this is actually getting down into that weight. Whereas if we look at some other quote unquote toothpicks on the market, they can be over 100 grams and really, anyway. So 88 grams with that 350. However, flight time on that 350 is acceptable and agility is good. But I really liked flying it more. This is a GNB 450, and that brings the weight up to 99 grams. That's, I didn't find that, I didn't feel like handling suffered too much, and I felt like flight time was better. I also have flown it with one of these raised day quads, 550 uh, milliamp hours. At that point, I was definitely starting to feel the weight, but you got, again, significantly longer flight time. So that's the good stuff. Here are some things that I think could be done a little better. This whip antenna sticking out the back gets into the props. You can see mine has been chopped. It doesn't get into the props on every flight, but it does get into the props fairly regularly. It really needs to come straight out the top or in some other way be prevented from getting into the props. It's just, I don't know why so many micro manufacturers ship their antennas in such, Emacs, I'm looking at you. They sh why, Do, does this not come up in testing? I don't get it. RF signal, low. See, there's no way I'm going to get through this. Oh, I did it. Camera's not the worst, but not spectacular coming through there, the way it handled the exposure. Let's do that again. Through here, the camera looks pretty good. Coming through this area, you can see the outside is really RF blown signal, out right low. here. Blown out, and then it adjusts be a little better. You can see we're RF barely signal, touching the throttle. But if we were able to go to some more up tilt, we could go faster. We're still, we're at like 30% throttle here. Hardly anything. So it's got a lot of room to go faster if given more up tilt. I'm barely even pushing it to be honest. Just cruising really. There's 45% RF signal, low. It's nice and fast. I really like It's nice and fast. Feels pretty smooth as you start to raise throttle and push it a little. I would race this. I would totally race this. Apparently I didn't charge this battery. Let's go see what any of that looks like. For the FreeSky version of the Larva X, the receiver is built into the flight controller and the receiver antenna is soldered directly to the flight controller. So you don't have diversity and range is not very good. In this case, they have done something to keep the antenna out of the props. They've sort of folded it down so it comes out the bottom. That certainly isn't helping range. Um, 
If I had the option, I would order this with an XM Plus with diversity antennas on it instead of this built-in one, and I think you'd get significantly better range. Uh, the good news is that I never had to worry about outrunning the 200 milliwatt video transmitter, even though it has a not that great width antenna on it. It's okay, but it's not great. I was running out of RSSI far before I was starting to run out of even the 200 milliwatt video transmitter. Upgrading the receiver on this guy if you really want to take the most advantage of it, it's just a must. Another change I made was to add some Umagrip battery pad here on the base plate. It doesn't have to be Umagrip, although I personally think Umagrip's pretty good. Any kind of sticky gel, or if you prefer Velcro or Dual Lock, something to keep the battery from ejecting. You can see that this battery strap does not have any grippiness to it whatsoever. And if you don't have something grippy here on the base, the battery is going to be coming out in a crash. It does come with a little foam pad, but it's not grippy. You need something grippy here. The battery strap itself could also be upgraded. I really prefer to have a grippy battery strap, although with these small batteries, a good piece of gel will hold on to it. But the biggest complaint I have about this quad is the durability in a front end crash. And you can see that the way it's designed, this canopy is gonna take the hit in, in a crash. That's just a fact. If we compare that to something like this, which is the Full Speed Toothpick Pro, this is a more traditional H-style or X-style frame, and it's got the camera on the front. The camera's gonna take a hit. The canopy has a little bit of give because it's flexible TPU. Maybe you'll break the camera lens, but the flight control stack is relatively well protected. In this case, the flight control stack is going to take all of the impact. So not only does this plastic canopy take a hit in a crash, and you can see right here where in a, in a, I mean, granted I was just flying, I wasn't flat out, but I was going pretty fast and I smacked into a tree. Okay, but that's what we do with these guys and they need to be able to take it. And you can see after just one relatively solid crash, this canopy is basically toast. You got a, a break here and it broke down here and yeah, that's, that's too bad. The other thing that is really too bad is that this whole stack is held together by a set of these M2 screws. And although the screws are metal, so they're relatively stiff, all of the boards are soft mounted. And that means there's so much flex. Look at all that flex. And I've actually intentionally left this this way so you could see it. After w the same head-on impact that broke the canopy, you can see that the video transmitter here has popped out of its soft mounting and everything is just sort of bleh. And in my case, the quad remained, there was no permanent damage and the quad remained perfectly flyable. But you could certainly imagine a scenario where these boards would make contact, short out, and be damaged. And the bottom line is that after a crash, I wasn't able to just pick the quad. Well, okay, I was able to just pick the quad up and keep flying it, but you can see it's certainly not in flyable condition. I think Happy Model absolutely has done the right thing by trying to soft mount the boards, but I'm not sure why you're soft mounting the video transmitter. I think if the video transmitter actually had mounting holes drilled in it and it was hard mounted to these mounting screws, it might actually provide more structural integrity. Because right now, the only thing holding this together is this plastic canopy, and the plastic canopy is just not providing enough rigidity to keep the whole thing from falling apart when you hit it. So that is the Happy Model Larva X. And to tell you the truth, I'm kind of on the fence about whether I personally feel like I would recommend it. It flies very well. It has a great, great balance of power and weight. It is smooth at top throttle. I really expected when I hit the throttle and went to max that I would hear some kind of oscillation or something. It's often very difficult to get these micros tuned well across the whole throttle range. It has, it's great across the whole throttle range and that's just on the stock tune. If you really start digging into it, then you can get there. Like for example, Nick Burns has a suggested tune for it that I reckon is even better just because I haven't tried it, but I know Nick is very, knowledgeable and rec reputable. So this is a very good flying quad, but the issue with its durability really gives me pause. Like I really wish, maybe we could like 3D print some kind of a bracket that helps add some rigidity here and protects the stack from falling apart. I was really disappointed 
in this impact to see that the canopy kind of fell apart and the stack kind of let itself go. I think this is close to being a very, very good quad. And I'm not sure what I would name that's better. Like for example, this is the Full Speed Toothpick Pro that I reviewed just a little while back. You can, I'll link in the video description if you want to watch my review of that. This guy runs on a 4S 520 milliamp hour pack and it's closer to around 130 grams. It's without the battery, I think. It's a much heavier, it's a very different quad. But in some ways it's similar and in some ways I'd almost rather be flying it. So I guess it just depends, but it's not really a toothpick, is it? So I just, I guess it just depends on where you're at. At a price of around 120 bucks, this is a pretty good performing quad and that's priced very competitively compared to other stuff that's out there. But this is also a very, very fast moving market. So if there's something out there that you think is better than this at the same price, put it in the comments and I'll do my best to review it. In the meantime, I hope I've given you the information that you need to know to help you make a decision on whether this is the quad for you. And uh, let me remind you, if it is the quad for you, I have a full setup video for this down in the video description. Um, and if you need some help getting it set up, hope you'll check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.